Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Monday the 17th of April 2023 in today's Mill News. We start off with this um, some sad news. Lee's Loney Charlie Cressel has eye surgery confirmation that his campaign at Mill is over. This is from the London News Online the South London Press's online website. Mill Loney Charlie Cressel has undergone surgery in his fractured eye socket. The centre back posted on his Instagram about having an operation to repair the damage suffered. At West Bromwich Albion, the Leeds United defender was caught in the face by striker Daryl Dyke in stoppage time at the Orphans. And here we go. Surgery all done and successful. Time to rest, recover and get back on that pitch safely. Thank you for your messages. Um, uh, yeah. um, it is expected that he will take around five to six weeks to recover fully from the operation. A 20-year-old capped by England at under-21 levels made 30 appearances this season for the Lions, 28 of those in the Championship. Cresswell was a subject of interest from Stoke City in January, but he stayed in SC16. Sean Hutchinson's injury opened the door for a first-team return and he impressed before he set back against the Baggies. Um, yeah, I think... Um, I speak for most Millwall fans when I say thank you very much, Charlie Cresswell. You were an absolute uh, star. Um, you started off like a house on fire. You had a bit of a wobble, but you, you, you didn't let it bother you. You came straight back and you, you carried on. Uh, you put yourself out there. You put yourself on the line, notably getting a kick in the face against Hull, uh, which gave you a shine, and obviously against West Brom as well. I mean, typical um, Millwall attitude. Uh, that we love, and uh, I don't know if you're in contention, if you're allowed to be in contention with the under under player, um, uh, the the young player of the year that seasons awards. But if you are, I mean, um, yeah, well, please do come back and get your award. We really would like to see you again. Uh, maybe even in the future, come back to play for Mill. Um, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, thank you very much, Charlie Cresswell. And good luck with uh, getting your face all fixed up. Uh, moving on to this from southwarknews.co.uk. Zion Fleming talks through his strike against Preston and Mills battle for a top six finish. The Dutch man failed to find the back of the net in six games before returning, scoring against the Lily Whites on Saturday afternoon. Things have not quite fallen into place for Zion Fleming in recent weeks, but the stars aligned for him to find the back of the net in Saturday's 2-0 win against Preston North End. Uh, Scott Malone's free kick was floated under the head of Jake Cooper, who headed the ball in the path of the Dutch man. Uh, the ball seemed to bounce out of his control, but he leaped up to fire a fantastic volley into the back of the net to seal all three points for me. Whoa, hey! At first, I didn't expect the ball to land in my space, he admitted after the win. It had quite the big bounce, uh, which is why the defender misjudged it as well, and then I had to take the ball quite high. I couldn't wait for it to drop down because I felt like there was defenders all around me in the end. Uh, that's why I had to be a bit more acrobatic than usual. But it's always nice to score a goal, especially when it's been a few games. Uh, maybe you want it even more. To be fair, it, it didn't really feel different to any other goal. A goal is a goal. Uh, I'm always happy with it, but I'm not extra, extra happy. It was like I was feeling bad about not scoring for a few games. Uh, sometimes it goes like that, sometimes they fall in and sometimes they don't. The context of the goal was also important. Fleming strike helped the Lions secure their first win in four games, keeping them fifth in the table with four games to go. Their lead on seventh place is slender, but the finish line is in sight. The 24-year-old has previously claimed that he does not feel pressure in a promotion battle, but even he has started to recognise the magnitude of Mill's final championship fixtures. You feel that it's different, uh, especially in such a long season of 46 games, he explained. It's different if you play 20 or 25 because there are still so many chances uh, to make up a mistake. Uh, now it's getting more and more important. I felt the importance in the run-up to this game. Uh, when I woke up, I was like, yeah, this is a big day. This is a special day. And it got me a bit more excited than usual. Uh, in the end, uh, these are the days that it's all about, uh, where you're going to have to make the difference. Uh, luckily, that happened today. The Championship Golden Boot seems out of reach for Fleming with Middlesbrough's Tuba Akpon leading the race with 27 goals. However, there is an internal battle between him and striker Tom Bradshaw to finish as Mill's top scorer. Although the Ajax Academy graduate revealed that he doesn't care who wins it as long as they secure promotion to the Premier League. Uh, nonetheless, there are clear positives of having two attackers on double digits for the campaign 
Fleming is hopeful that it will give them a boost heading into their final games of the season. I think he scored 15th today and I scored my 14th, but I have to stay close to him, he can't run away too easily, uh, especially after I assisted him. Uh, I think it's good, it's very nice that he scores loads of goals and I score loads of goals, it helps in uh, uh, multiple players uh, score more goals. It's nice because sometimes some days you, you won't be able to do it, uh, it won't fall for you and then it's the other fall for brothers or the, the other way around. Uh, this time it fell for both of us, which is really good. Simon Fleming there, talking about goals, goals, goals. Now moving on, Gary Rowett praising uh, the senior players yesterday, now he's praising George Long. This is from the SouthernNews.co.uk. Gary Rowett praises Mill goalkeeper after third clean sheet in four games. George Long made two outstanding saves to help the Lions pick up all three points at the den on Saturday afternoon. Yes, he did. It was quite, he was pretty decent um, against Preston. Uh, Gary Rowett praised Mill goalkeeper Jules Zong after helping his side secure their third clean sheet in four championship matches. The Lions have conceded just twice in their last five games, with both goals coming in 1 0 defeats, uh, which is good for the goal difference. We need, we do lead, lose, it needs to be wide by one goal. Uh, Long played an important part in shutting out the likes of West Brom and Luton Town while also making numerous saves to deny Preston North End on Saturday afternoon. The Lily Whites re registered an expected goals of 0.87 with three of their eight shots hitting the target. Long made two saves with Scott Malone clearing the third off the line as Millwall picked up a vital three points in SE16. Long's performance was particularly notable as Preston regularly threatened in the latter stages of the first half and Rout was pleased that he was able to help the hosts win in a game where they came under substantial pressure. If you look at the last four games, we haven't uh, conceded many chances, the manager said often. Today, uh, we conceded more chances than I'll be particularly fond of, uh, but that's what he's there for, he's uh, there to make the big save. And I thought he did that really well. He's actually made some big saves this season. Uh, we know his kicking is very, very good, but aren't they? Some of the other bits of this game that you get you in the team, when you've got someone like Bart with his pedigree breathing down your neck, you've got to make those big saves and defensively as a team. I thought our back four defended well, but I thought we were a little bit loose today. You don't want to be loose, do you? You do not want to be loose. Certainly not. Um, now, moving on. Before we preview the game tomorrow, obviously there's, we're playing Birmingham at home. There's another game tomorrow, the under-21s. I told you about it uh, a little bit yesterday. And uh, Mill FC have done their own preview on their website. Um, bits and pieces. It is taking place at York City Stadium. Um, so a win for me will see them prolong their stay at the top of the professional development league and will all but confirm their place in the playoffs. Um, yeah, and you can it'll be live tweeted on Mill at Mill Academy. So there you go. And there was some games today which uh, have an impact on Mill's position. Um, so today we had what did we have? We had Reading losing at Wigan. We had. Uh, Cardiff losing? I don't know if that affects us. But Bristol City drew 1-1 at Burnley. And that is the game that we were looking for. Because if we go back up to the table, which you probably already looked at. So Mill will stay top of the table. And now Mill and Bristol have both played 24 games. There's 27 games in the season, so there's three games to go. Mill will are one point away from being guaranteed to be in a playoffs because... Swansea, obviously they've got four games left, that's a potential 12 points. So if they win all their games and Mill lose all theirs, then there's the slim, slim, still mathematical, mathematical potential that Swansea could overtake Mill all. But realistically, we only need one point from three games. Um, so, uh, you know, it's basically going to happen. Or we just need Swansea to drop some points and then uh, we're in anyway. So there you go. But like I said, we're still competing with Bristol for the um for what? Um for for first place. Um but if we go and look I think we got so obviously we're playing Sheffield. Um we're playing crew. I know that that, that game's scheduled to be at the den after this game in uh, next week. And then I think the last game is Sheffield Wednesday but I'm not too sure about that. Um I could pull it up if I go like that and go like that and like that and then we wait and then we wait 
and then we scroll down and so yeah the next up is Sheffield United and then home game against crew and then it's oh it's another then we've got Wigan and then Sheffield Wednesday so yeah I mean pretty much guaranteed more or less if we don't get our points we just got to hope Swansea drops some so there you go um now moving on to the preview of Birmingham City at home again 11b11.com still unable to manipulate the fixtures and sort them alphabetically so I'm gonna have to do this um obviously I've highlighted where it says Millwall V so that these are the home games that are highlighted in orange and yellow um and we haven't played Birmingham City that many times because we haven't been in the same league um many on many occasions um but uh this is a game that we do lose quite often at home um starting back all the way back in 1947 on the 17th of may that was a late one uh that was a 2-0 defeat first time we played them at the den then uh 10 years later in the fa cup losing 4-1 First win came in 1966 in October, 3-1 victory. Um, and then again another defeat in 1968, 3-1 defeat. Massive, massive 1976-2 win. Um, and then we've got a win, we lose, we win, we draw, nil nil, we win, we win. There's a draw, a 1-1 one -one draw in the League Cup in 1998, and then we, we get to the 2000s. Um, obviously, this is when Birmingham seemed to be on some kind of ascendancy. What they, did they ever get to the Premier League? I they weren't in the Premier League, were they? I can't. I don't know. I'm not too. I'm not a Premier League historian, so I don't know what but they seem to be a pretty decent team um, in the Championship. And this is when we come up against them, and we we struggle bad in the 2000s. Um, so obviously, with that playoff game, Stone John, that guy, yeah. Lose that one nil on two thousand second of May two thousand and two. Oi oi oi. Um in the League Cup we lost that, although it was the draw, so did we lose on penalties? Um must have done. We lost in the FA Cup in twenty eleven and then we lose six nil in uh, January twenty twelve. Um that one doesn't seem to have stuck in my memory as much as the Rotherham six nil. So what happened there? I don't know. Uh, 2012 weird and then a 3-3 free -free draw also in 2012 uh, a 3-2 defeat in 2014 3-1 defeat in 2014 so we're not doing too well against them uh, recently um, although so 2017 we actually win 2-0 uh, 2018 we lose 2-0 and that's the last time we lost at home to them the last three matches we played at the Den Nil nil draw in February 2020, um, a 2 0 win in February 2021, and in December 2021, a 3 1 win. So, obviously, they've got massive financial troubles. Um, Chinese owners being a bit moody, um, taking loans out of the club and stuff, financial fair play struggles. Um, so, that's kind of messed them up, and that's why we're on the ascendancy now, and they're kind of falling off. But um, like I said, the tide may have turned. The tide may have turned. We may be getting some decent results again. Then it was in basically home and away. You can see here. If we go, was that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve? In the last twelve games, home and away, we've only lost once. And that was that two 0 defeat in 2018. So the tide does seem to have been turned. Um, so hopefully it carries on. Um, going the way that it's going um, tomorrow but uh, that is not guaranteed so here we go this is whoscored.com and it's the game tomorrow Mill versus Birmingham you can see here so the last six games at the Den uh, we actually got a red card in 2018 um, and so that game that we lost what I just said was a lot first one loss in 12 games we actually got a red card in so there were extended changes to the circumstances. Um, you can see eight goals for us, six for them. Um, eight yellow cards for us, eleven for them. Uh, three wins, one draw, and two defeats. 
and we kept what, three clean sheets and they kept two clean sheets so there you go uh, if we scroll down past him here's the table as it stands we're fifth and there's 17 and it's a mirror we've won 18 drawn 11 lost 13 mirror that they've won 13 drawn 11 lost 18 um, they've conceded 53 and only scored 45 which gives them minus 8 goal difference um, they are mathematically safe now I believe so well, cheers all round I guess um, let's have a look at so obviously at home we are 5th in the home table as you can see there away how are they? they're 15th ok so they're not very good away they won one away game in the last six, and that was a QPR. Which, well, it's QPR. Does that really count? I mean, that's guaranteed, isn't it? These days. Um. So yeah. Um. Let's have a look at the form table. See where that stands now. Oh, here we go. Identical. So the last six games, home and away, combined. One, two, drawn two, lost two. Same as Millwall. They've scored four. We've scored four. They've conceded six. So they've still got the negative goal difference, even though they've got the same uh, results as us. So if we go down and see, these are Mill's last six home games. These are um, uh, Birmingham's last six away games. They've only kept one, uh, they've only failed to score once. That was at Watford. So they, they can score away from home, although most of the teams there are pretty dross. Um, Norwich are struggling, but they still won the game. Um, they they scored at Wigan, they scored at QPR. They, that was their only clean sheet as well against QPR. No surprise. Um, they scored it against Reading again. Not really a surprise. And they scored at Sunderland. So they can score away from home. They're, I think they're very good on the counter attacks, I believe. Now, Mill Wall on the other hand, we've kept two clean sheets in the last two home games. A nil nil against Luton and a uh, the last game against Preston on the weekend. Uh, we failed to score against Huddersfield, which we lost one nil. We failed to score against Luton. Although every other game before that, you can see against Burnley, against Norwich, against Swansea, both teams scored. So there you go. I think this might be a game where we need to score one more one uh, more than one goal if we're going to win it. Because um, I think. Trying to keep a clean sheet against Birmingham may be pretty hard, especially when we're going Saturday, Tuesday. Um, here's strengths and weaknesses. Very strong on Millwall. Um, so there you go. Um, there's the styles. Match forecast. Millwall score from a direct free kick. Millwall steal the ball from the opposition often. Millwall straight off side often. Okay, here are the match facts on the right hand side. Uh, Mill have been drawing at both half time and full time in five of the last seven matches against Birmingham in all competitions. So they're saying you should bet Mill uh, draw draw. Uh, that is not betting advice. I don't. I'm just reading what they've got on the screen here. There have been under two and a half goals scored in Mill's last five games in the championship. And Mill are undefeated in their last eight matches against Birmingham in all competitions. Yes, yeah, so. Um, what are we moving on to? Next one. Um, so we're going to have a look at the prediction now from whoscored.com. Having read all of that information, what do you think that they predict? Um, here's the injury list, which is extensive. Tyler Burry should be back. But I don't know if he's going to be on the bench. Um, could we see um, who's going to be the left back up left back? Callum Styles is out. Mario Wallace is out. Could we see Nino Adam Maliki? Or um, that he might be. Playing for the under 21s up at Sheffield United. So if he's not in featuring in that game, that might be a clue that he's going to be on the bench. Um, if not, who else? Who else? Maybe Savile could be deputised there, but then you lose him in the middle. And that's but that's in the merge itself. Obviously, Mario, um, Scott Malone will be playing left back almost certainly. Um, maybe uh, Danny McNamara can go over there. Um, I don't know, but we do need to have a plan. Or uh or left back if we get a problem with Scott Malone. Um but I think that's the only issue really. And a centre back. Who's who's going centre back? George Evans? Um don't know, but uh that will be very scary, wouldn't it? Um yeah. Uh so there are the match facts that we just 
read prediction from whoscored.com. Millwall revived their form in a nick of time on Saturday afternoon, claiming a deserved 2 0 win at home against playoff rivals Preston. That result was crucial for Gary outside, who are now three points clear of seventh place Coventry. Birmingham couldn't capitalise on a late Dennis Sirkin red card at the weekend as they were beaten 2 1 by an informed Sunderland side. John Eustace's men are winless in their last three league games and are unlikely to change that at the end of midweek. They predict it will be Millwall 1. Birmingham 0. 1 0. So there you go. Um, okay. Now, moving on to SkySports.com. David Prutton and his predictions. What will he predict for Millwall versus Birmingham? Here we go. What a big win for Millwall that was at the weekend. Not our. After four games without a goal to go up against an informed Preston in a huge playoff tussle and come out on top showed the resilience of Gary outside. Birmingham are ticking along the mid-table now. They haven't won in three, but they know they are safe, which is a big achievement in itself for them. This should be a Millwall win. And he predicts Millwall 2, Birmingham 0. So there you go. Uh, a 1-0 and a 2-0. Now, before I give you my prediction, I'm going to let you know game is on Sky Sports main event, it's on Sky Sports Football, and it's on Sky Sports Ultra. It is an 8 o'clock kickoff because of that. Uh, for some reason, they are kicking off at 8 o'clock. I don't know why. Maybe they don't want to clash with EastEnders or watch out what, what the other dross is on. I don't know, but 8 o'clock kickoff it is. So there you go. Um, now, moving on to this. Um... Match passes are not available for UK viewers. It's not, you cannot buy a match pass to view it on Mill TV Plus. Um, if you are an international subscriber, you can, but only in certain territories because of what you're seeing on your screen here now. Uh, obviously, it's because it's on television, it's being broadcast around the world as well. Uh, it's being shown in Arena Sports 6 in Croatia, being uh, connected MENA, being Sports in MENA, Dazen Espana. Match for Hungary, uh, the Sky Channels that just mentioned, and via plays in Baltic, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, and Sweden. So there you go. Um, if you're in any of the countries and you're trying to buy a match pass, you can't. You need to watch it on those channels because it's going to be blocked in your region. Um, so there you go. Now, getting back to the prediction from me, let's have a look. What are we looking at here? Um, um, I think it's going to be Mill 2, Birmingham 1. So, Mill 2, Birmingham 1. I think we're probably going to be 2 0 up and then they're going to get a goal back. Um, yeah, I'm going to say 2 1. So, there you go. And on that note, thank you for watching and 